Hey, what's going on guys? It's Mark back in the workshop on Mark's Aquatics. Right, on this little video, we're going to be doing some maintenance. As you can see, I have pulled out a whole bucket full nearly of that sea lettuce from around the back here. And um, at the right at the back of the filter as well. And I've also taken out a large piece of the, uh, the razor rack and I've put it into this new little aquarium that we've been setting up. But before we go any further, I'd like to apologise for the awful videos the last two videos that I've put out, I've got new editing software, I'm not sure if I got the bit rate confused or something was going on, but it uploaded in 4K, but it was very pixelated, not much fun to watch, so I do apologise for that. Hopefully, this one's going to be a lot better. Now then, I've made it, I've done another water change today. I thought I'd do one a little bit earlier than every two weeks. Um, I've taken out a lot of the weed, you can see the dulse is growing like crazy. If for you who don't know, that's the red weed there if you're new to the channel. And if you are, thank you for watching. Hit the old subscribe button and that notification bell would be absolutely fantastic. Love to have you aboard. We've taken out a lot of, like I said, the sea lettuce from this side and this side. It was right covering the back. And um, I can't believe how quickly it's growing, to be honest, under these lights. As you can see, I've added another fluval um, light bar on the top of the tank there. I, I did have an Aqua Sky which was the more white coloration higher up on the ceiling but I just feel I'm getting a better light distribution throughout the weed with all these different light, well with the three different lights on there now. Now as you can see there's a lot of stir up in the water which this tank absolutely loves. When you mix everything up it's just like that returning tide and everything gets a bit whooshed up, bits of weed that have, bit, have decayed a bit, break away and um, just like that, <laughs> as, as if on cue, a lovely big piece of dulse come off there and it, this is what it does, it just, it'll break off from the base and then it'll just float around and this way after a storm you see all, these weed, all the weed up on the beach because anything which is not hanging on very tight and you stir it around breaks off and floats off but you can also reseed that in the um, in another aquarium which is what I'm going to do on the little nano tank which we're just setting up the new one I'll just square that up slightly that annoys me that not square it's got to be square and um, yes as you can see all the anemones are out they're all fully open looking for food because of that stir up in the water and the uh, snake locks are doing beautiful I've got a bit of dolts in the front there I think which I'm going to take out um, the little hermit crab's going like crazy there at the front there because I've moved some of the sand around as well because the power head tends to do a big circular motion in the tank and it just creates that little sort of balding spot in the corner there it just blows it all back so I keep moving it around and I've also what I'm going to do now is move the power head from the back and I'm going to face it going that way for this month so it's going to circle circulate this way and then next month I'll get it and I'll circulate it that way. So it's just changing things up, mixing things up for them and not keeping everything the same. So it's, um, and also it makes the water go through those weeds a lot easier. Now I've some of that bladder rack, as you can see, floating around on the surface there. But we'll just get in and we'll have a closer look at that. Um, it's getting quite long, streaming across the top there. You can see the kelp's doing quite well there as you can see that you can have a look from the top there's a little snail there right on top of there look he's a cute little guy but yes that bladder rack as you can see is growing at an alarming rate so what we're going to do is we're going to snip off some of the longer bits and then it'll carry on growing and it'll encourage growth as well you can see um, just there you can see other algae growing on the seaweed itself there could be some sea lettuce but look at that that dulse is absolutely stunning that's all new growth you can see there that lovely red fantastic stuff and how are the inmates doing well let me clean the glass this is not good viewing that's a bit better oh naughty peach he's got one of those little um what do you call it's there one of those little um winkle shells some of the hermit crabs have jumped ship again but he's found one of those and he's turned it over and he's having a little feed on there Lenny's doing well some algae starting to grow on his rock as you can see from the last video it's got a little bit more green on it
That streamer weed's doing okay. That's that little piece we found down the beach just there at the back. That's still growing. And that dulcet's got that beautiful blue sheen to it and the uh, the Irish moss as well. I know it's a little bit blurry, a bit, a bit cloudy, but um, we'll rectify all that as, it, as we go along. Everything's getting blown around and fantastic stuff. This is all the weed we've taken out. Look at that. And there's absolutely loads and loads of weed. I feel a BLT coming on. Put that or fry that up. It's really nice fried actually. I know a lot of you will say, oh, I'm not eating that. Anyway, guys, tell me what you think you'd like to see in this tank next that we can go foraging for on the next big tides. Hey, there's Aunt Blenny. She was a little bit spooked when we were cleaning out the tank earlier, but she's going to come out. Look how well that weed's grown on the top. We've got the gang of shrimp still up the top there, picking away. Doing an extremely good job. Here they are from the top. And Aunt Blenny as well, look at that. But you can see the other weeds there growing on that, but those are the bits that are right on the surface and they don't get the flow. So this is what I'm saying about detritus settling on things and then creating that energy for more algae to grow. Little pockets of detritus build up there. But you can see it growing up the glass there, the weed. Lots of young sea lettuce. But we'll snip all these bits off and that'll act as, um, like I say, it'll make it grow more. Yeah, it should be this colour on this side. That's all new growth, as you can see. And that tip there on the surface again, so it's got more algae in it. But we're going to snip all these little bits off to encourage new growth. I do love looking down on the top. Look at that, that lovely green snake lock there. If you didn't know, they actually glow under ultraviolet light which is fantastic. I've got to get one of those and um, on this tank and we'll see them really glow up. They're absolutely fas fascinating to see at night when they glow. Yes, it's low tide in the tank. So I've got another 25 litres of water now, which I'm going to put back in. Hello, Mrs. Gobi. Now, I'm not sure what's happened with these eggs in there, to be honest, because um, I think the hermit crab has gone down the back monkey mr monkey man as i call him i don't know if that's him there see his little mate who's decided he's grown more he shed his shell and he's hopped into one of these other shells so they do grow quite quickly hermit crabs but he's disappeared and has been disappeared for a couple of days so whether or not he's molted again i'm not sure and he's just hardening up in his shell somewhere or he's eating all them goby eggs now thank you for doing all your research on the gobies for me i did a little bit myself and as you guys found out as well, they can have up to 7,000 eggs. 7,000 babies? Yep, 7,000. And they lay them in a big flat sheet all over the rocks um, within, I think it's, uh, well, 10 to 20 days, I think I, I, I read up about, they'll, uh, they hatch out. So if we don't get any this time, hopefully next time we will. She's starting to look a little bit fat in the belly again. But I think what I'm going to do, there you go, remember that cockle was absolutely pure white, that's how the algae takes over, you see. And the snails will find that, when they're not being eaten by you. And, they'll polish that shell up and they'll clean it up. I've got to get a lot more in here. I found the winkles actually were coming out here, because this is a little area here, around the pipe. And they were coming out, and they were, I got up in the morning and there was about six, all up here. All having a chill out, in the intertidal zone. And, um, and then that later on that evening they all went back in again, which was quite cool. But they're, um, they are obviously getting predated on by the starfish in the tank. So we've got to, we've got to replace those guys, because that's all that starfish eat is the bivalves and, and things like that, of that nature. So we've got to provide them with their food as well, or we wouldn't be able to keep them. Like I said, the volcano man's doing well. He's out munching around.
He's out munching around. You can see right down the bottom of that shell there, that new growth that's happening, that little white rim around the bottom there. That's all new shell growth, that is. Anyway, I'm going to start rabbiting, or stop rabbiting on for a minute. Um, what we're going to do, you'll probably see me, I'm just going to do a little bit of hyperlapse now and some chilling music. And I'm going to just take a few more bits of weed out of here, I think. And tidy the place up and then I'm going to start sticking it all onto different rocks and things I'll show you how you do that and we'll do the other little tank on another little video but I'll film that today as well and get you going get that all going look at those little shrimps going can't believe that blanket of weed which is growing in that it just looks like a lawn it's absolutely fabulous look at that and you can see all the air all that is all those bubbles, it's called purling, you see it in the freshwater world as well and all plants, all living things in the sea and taking in and releasing all that oxygen into the water, look at that. Absolutely fabulous. But these are the bits here that we're going to cut off, so I'm going to get on with that. Ah, well, there you go, guys. Water change all done. All looking spick and span again. Little peach there at the front of the glass. He's finished with that winkle. And as soon as he's finished with it, a little hermit crab's over in the far corner there. If you can see that shell, he's already checking it out for a new bit of real estate. I'll put a video, I'll put a, video a, a little bit of video up now of this madman popping shells again. And he's moved again. <laughs> oh, it's funny. What he does is, he'll wait for the other shell to get completely covered in algae, and then what he does is he jumps in into the other shell, which is clean, and been cleaned by the other ones, and then he'll clean the old shell off and then jump back in to the other shell. If I get in there nice and close, you'll see he's actually taking all the algae off the old shell. And now he's not going to do it. Now he's going to hide inside his shell. Oh well, that's fair enough. It's up to you mate, well, he's coming out again. But you can see how covered in algae the old shell is and how clean the new one is because all the little hermit crabs have picked that absolutely clean and they'll do that now with the old shell that but give it half an hour and all the ba little baby hermit crabs will be all over that shell polishing that shell up till it looks like the one that he's got on all speck and span again so he feels all nice and clean in his in his friday or saturday night suit and he's off out on the prowl so he's a happy boy now look at that now this little goby here at the front He's decided I'm going to do a little burrow. If you watch him, he'll start thinning away, getting mouthfuls. And spitting it out. But the other one's annoying him at the moment, so I think it's his girlfriend. So I'll see if I can catch him doing that. But he goes down and his little 
fins go backwards and forwards and it blows all that sand right out to that big heap that you can see there at the front. Come on then, do it for us again please. We all want to see it. We want to see you at work. Interesting stuff. I love just sitting down here quietly, just watching what goes on. And you'd have thought normally they'd have gone behind the rocks and done the eggs and everything else. But maybe because the hermit crab has discovered them eggs, I think. There he goes, look, getting mouthfuls of soil, uh, of substrate. And this is how they burrow. And he'll go the other side now and, and spit it all out. There you go. <laughs> It's fantastic. Really is interesting watching these little guys. You don't see this this kind of stuff in the wild. So um, that's why I'm doing all these, just getting all this footage for you guys to watch because it's so interesting. It really is. Okay, this is what I mean by taking the old suit off and cleaning it up. Their little claws are like little, little blades right on the bottom and, and on the tips as well. And they'll just shear off that algae where it's growing and then eat that as well and I've noticed Aunt Blenny who's around here where are you ah there you are now she's been taking mouthfuls of the algae that's growing on the back of the uh, of the glass there which is interesting stuff I know you're watching me waiting for me to put food in for you but you've had your food so you'll have to wait till later on Yes, that's what he's doing, he's cleaning it all up. And when he's cleaned it, he'll probably hop back in it again. All, this, all the anemones, now that dahlia anemone here was over there. And it's crept, let me just zoom back out again. It's crept, it was there, and it's motored all the way around there, around there, around there, and now it's hiding down in here. But they are absolutely stunning, they really are. All the beadlet anemones are closed. Now there's that shell there. That peach photo bombed yet again. That's the one that peach was eating earlier. The little, little mauvey purple starfish. And already, this little hermit crab in that little whelk shell. He's already... Uh, He's already looking at that, thinking I might move in there. It looks nice and shiny and smooth. I think I might make that my new home. Now, like I said, I've moved that oyster up to the top there. It seems a lot happier up there as well. It seems to be the male goby's new place to perch. Like Pride Rock, it's goby rock. <laughs> and Aunt Blenny's having a little chat there with Peach. Look at that. Always watch it, always watch it. But it looks a lot better now, guys. I think opened up a lot more. You can see everything swaying better. And that flow is really now working just as I wanted it to work. Just pushing nicely all the way around the tank. And um, there you are. Let me, come on, got to get you in frame. Oh, there we go. Get out of my territory. And um, yeah, so we've got it. We've got the water change done now. We've thinned all the weed out. And we've done some work now on the um, on the new little tank. That's going to be uh, the next video up after this one. So we can see and we can go on to phase two of that little tank. And if you're following along and you're doing your own little tank, um, you can see what uh, what's going on next. Also, what I'm doing here as well, is um, I'm, I've got out, I'm not sure if you remember that, that big reactor that I built many, many, well, a couple of years ago now, maybe. And what I've done is I've put my little, I had one of those little bi-orb lights, and what I've done is I've fitted it into the top of there, and I'm going to be doing some phytoplankton cultures in there. So basically what I've done is, anyway, I'll get into that in a video, I'll just dedicate a little video to that, I think. Um, because we're going to be wanting to feed the tank with um, with phytoplankton obviously for the oyster and for the barnacles and everything else that are living in this system and we're going to have them some and what I might do actually I might get that culture going and then I might get a little doser on there and then every day I'll dose in a maybe a mill a day 
every day from in there so it's got a fresh um, supply of, of phytoplankton going in all the time so that should really make things jump about and obviously a little frying things start to grow in there as well they'll eat anything they'll eat all the phytoplankton and the small things anything that's small and eats phytoplankton in there will have a ready supply of it to uh, to to nourish it and to grow it so um, that's, that'll be interesting to uh, to follow along as well anyway guys I hope you like little maintenance day I sure do I love getting in there it's a little bit chilly but I do enjoy it and we've cleared all that weed out of there now really open that flow pattern up all the the weeds are just thriving away and now we're going to get this new phytoplankton culture going which is going to be even more beneficial for the tank and hopefully make it look even better anyway guys as always you're all stars love your loads take care of yourselves and i'll see you on the next episode of marks aquatics bye for now